Okay, the topic for this uh, video is about the sentence semantics situations. So, in our discussion today, what we are going to discuss is about the description of situations. We'll see that languages allow speakers to construct different views of situations by using semantic distinctions of situation type, tense, and aspect. And then, system of mood allows speakers to adopt different attitudes toward the factuality of their sentences and evidentiality systems allow them to identify the source of their belief. These are the sentence level semantic systems that enable speakers to organize descriptions of situations. So these are what we are going to discuss in this video. First, we need to know the situation's type. The situation type is a label for the typology of situations encoded in the semantics of a language. So here we have two kinds of situation in these sentences. The first is the states. We have sentences like Robert loves pizza and then Mary knows the way to San Jose. And the dynamic sentence are give, uh, given in these sentences. Robert grew very quickly. Mary is driving to San Jose. Okay, we'll see that there are some differences in these sentences. And these sentences are given by its situations. Okay, we'll see that the situations given are in the form of stative or dynamic. So a situation can be static if it is stable for its duration or it is dynamic if it changes over time. So this distinction between static and dynamic situations is reflected in the choice of lexical items. In English, for example, adjectives are typically used for states or for static situation, and verbs are usually used for dynamic situations. Okay, we'll see some examples here. We have two similar sentences. The peers are right. And the second one, the peers ripened. As we are taught that the difference between stative and dynamic are in the lexical choices. Here we have ripe as the adjective which shows that this sentence is in stative situation. And the verb ripened shows that this sentence is in dynamic situation and so for these sentences the theater is full full is an adjective which shows the stative situation and the theater filled up which shows the dynamic situation stative and dynamic can be also uh, shown by different verb classes so as we have already known that stative means steady situation, relatively unchanging, it also has no reference to an explicit start or end point. For example, we will see this sentence, Mary loved to drive sports cars. So here, although this is a past sentence, but it doesn't give any reference to the explicit start of this activity and also the end time for this activity but we can compare to the dynamic situation the situations that have internal phases in sentence like mary learned to drive sports cars we can imagine the process of learning here so it has several phases be uh, from the first time Mary cannot drive until Mary can drive the sports car said what is said as dynamic situation 
The properties of stative verbs or adjectives can be usually incompatible with progressive aspect. So the stative verbs or stative adjectives usually compatible incompatible with progressive aspect. You can see here in these two sentences. I am learning English. This is dynamic situation. And I am knowing English. This is stative situation. So it in using knowing here in stative situation it is incompatible and also it is usually strange with imperatives in dynamic situation when someone says learn English it is not strange but in using the stative verb like no here no English it becomes strange but there are some exceptions in which the verb like remain or help will not give the same effect as we have in these words verbs just like no here so remain and help will give different meaning to the static verbs here now we have the properties of dynamic verbs the dynamic verbs have two kinds durative versus punctual the durative versus punctual verbs are identified whether the situation described by verb lasts for a period of time or not. So we'll see the situation if the situation can it can be described by the period of time, then it is called durative. For example, here we have two sentences: John coughed. John slept. We'll see the difference between two sentences that in John slept, it is a durative because it lasts for a period of time. But if we compare to John coughed, it is a punctual because it involves virtually no time. Punctual verbs, or also called semi-effective, describe events that occur for a brief moment. So there are some punctual verbs that can can be prolonged. So they can get an iterative interpretation if the duration is prolonged. For example, here we have the sentence John coughed. This is punctual. But when you make sentence like John coughed all night, so it gives the iterative interpretation because the duration is prolonged. So you calf all night. Another kind of um, dynamic verbs are telic versus atelic or bounded versus unbounded. Here are the situation described by verb as a natural point of completion. So in dynamic, we will need to see whether the situation has natural point or completion or not. If we have two sentences like this, Harry was singing songs and Harry was singing a song, then we will describe that these two sentences have two different situations. Although it seems similar, but the first sentence is in italic situation where it can continue indefinitely can imagine singing songs so there are more than one song so it can continue indefinitely but when a sentence is Harry was singing a song so it is a telic situation the process here will be over because the song song is only one so the process will be over and in the tense here we have tense that allows a speaker to locate a situation relative to some reference point in time most likely the time of speaking so if we know the term tense it will relate to the time of speaking Sometimes in English, this information is given by a temporal adverb. 
okay this are the this is the figure of simple tenses as the example of the tense we have past present and future and this is the act of speaking so the present will be our act of speaking so the past verb for C is so and the future form for C is will see okay there are a lot of tenses that we usually learn now we'll to the term aspect aspect allows speakers to view an event in various ways as complete or incomplete a short short as to involve almost no time as something stretched over a perceptible period or as something repeated over a period so we'll have the example of the aspect like progressive aspect for example in sentences like I am listening, I will be listening, I will be listening. So the three sentences here show progressive aspect. This is the simple present progressive, and then this one is past progressive, and this one is future progressive. And also for the perfective aspect, which shows the complete action. I have listened, I had listened, I will have listened, usually marked by the use of have or had here. The perfective focuses on the end point. So, the perfect focuses on the end point so it has completive for example I built the building so it is complete or experiential I have built the building or imperfective in which it is not perfect or it is not completed yet so it is progressive like in I was listening or I am listening or in the form of habitual, like I listen to the radio show. Different languages will grammaticalize different things, the use of this kind of uh, aspect. Now we'll see modality and evidentiality. This is the last part of the description of situation in a sentence. Modality expresses varying degrees of the speaker's commitment and belief. So we have different sentences here. She has left by now, she must have left by now, she must leave by now, she can leave now. These four sentences have different meanings since the use of modal here are also different. So must have and must leave of course will give different meaning. Must and can will give also different meaning. We have some kinds of modality. First is epistemic modality. Here the speaker signals degree of knowledge. For example, you can drive this car. So it means that you are able to do that. You are able to drive the car. And then the next modality is deontic modality. In this modality, the speaker signals his or her attitude to social factors of obligation and permission. For example, when you say you can drive this car or you may drive this car, it has the meaning that you have permission to drive this car. So both sentences have the meaning of permission. And when you say you must drive this car or you ought to drive this car, these sentences have meaning of obligation in which that you have an obligation to do that so different modality will give different meaning and modality will define the term mood this is the grammatical inflection used to mark modality in every language we will find the moods so here are some general moods that that can be found in each in every language in negative conditional imperative injunctive optative potential subjunctive and also instructive 
And the last part is about the evidentiality. What is the evidentiality? Evidentiality allows a speaker to communicate her attitude to the source of her information. So through the evidentiality, we will show the reader or will show the hearer about uh, the attitude toward the source of the information. So when the sentence says she was rich, it can be given the evidentiality by I saw that she was rich or I read that she was rich. She was rich, so they say. So there are different sources of information given in these sentences to mark that she was rich. Okay, so these are the, is the explanation about this sentence situation. Thank you very much and see you.